This is Scott Vanderpool, and you're listening to the Artist Edition Index Podcast, Episode 73. I went down to the St. James Infirmary, found my baby there, stretched out on a long white table, so sweet, so cold, so fast. Thank you for joining me once more as we take the written word from AEindex.org and bring it to life on this podcast. I'm a day late and a buck short here as uh, my family, we took a Christmas trip to Montreal. So we live, I live around Toronto in Ontario. That's the easiest point of reference. And so we, for vacation around Christmas, uh, we wanted to get away and uh, we like to do experiences. So we did a trip to Montreal. I wanted to do some good eating and I wanted to look at some comic stores. So that's the trip we did. Some excellent comic stores we got to look at. My son uh, collects one comic series, West Coast Avengers, and he filled in about 40 issues of the 102-issue run. And I got to see some artist editions, nothing too rare or anything like that. I did see a Spirit Volume 1 at uh, Comic Hunter, and they do ship worldwide. So if you're looking for uh, Will Eisner's Spirit Volume 1 and you're in Canada, you may want to contact Comic Hunter in Montreal. I was really hoping to see some French uh, AE format books, and I did manage to see two. Uh, one, Virgin Original uh, from Dupuis, a uh, Franklin book that I didn't have, and I think they wanted $350 for it, which is, it's a 120-euro book. I don't even know if it's in print, but I thought, wow, that's too much. And then they had the uh, Phil Deffer, the 99-euro one, and I didn't even look at a price on that. I was completely overwhelmed by some of the stores. There were just so many French volumes and just hundreds of bound copies of Spiro magazine. And it was just a wonderful experience. And I wish I read more French. And I really wanted to get my hands on some um, French AE format books. Because right now, I see them on the internet and I order them. But, you know, you, you get what you, that's it. So I try and keep up. You don't get to see a lot of older things. So I do have a trip to france planned in two years but that's a bit of a wait but that's okay anywho that's my big news for this uh this period here and that's why the podcast is late so thank you for bearing with me and doing that i do have some other interesting news that someone emailed me and this is fantastic so thank you Stephen z or Stephen z if you're american he sent me a link and said, hey, these uh, Dynamite's Best of Amparella magazine art edition is suddenly coming back up on websites for sale. It's listed as being available on February 8th, 2023. So I checked Diamond and yep, there it is. It's suddenly alive again. This listing is alive again after being up for years and canceled. Same item code, which makes me nervous, uh, you know, and it was listed in July of 2016. So I have a hard time believing this is coming out. I had an opportunity to speak with David Roach, who put this book together for Dynamite. And he wasn't sure if it was coming, when it was coming out or if it was coming out. Um, So that's interesting that that all happened. I am really looking forward to seeing that. That's going to be fantastic. I do have some sad news on my part because uh, the uh, Mick McMahon Judge Dredd Apex Edition that's supposed to be coming out this week from Through Diamond Uh, My local comic shop doesn't have any copies coming in. So I don't know if that's a delay or my local comic shop just got shorted. So I'm going to have to wait until Wednesday to see what their next week's shipment is and to see what happened there. So that's disappointing. Uh, Big news, of course, it's January 2nd. So January 1st, I had had the uh, Dunbeer Awards all laid out, ready to go on the website. So that went live at midnight or 12.01 actually. And the voting is uh, happening right now. So please go to the website. And do your voting. We had six books in 2022. So that's exciting. And uh, you get a nice uh, mix of publishers. We got four publishers for six books. And I, do, as, as I do every year, I rejig the categories. This time I thought, I'm, I'm from now on, I'm putting purchases first. Check off all the purchases you make. Then after that, this year, I've got best overall, best publisher, best design, best reproduction, and favorite material. Now, normally, I don't talk about this stuff until the end of the month when it's done. But I do want to mention that when I put best publisher, I actually put this blurb. What publisher or imprint in 2022 best represented the AE format with their commitment to quality, maintaining their publishing schedule, and promoting their material in the AE format? 
Now, I've uh, hey, IDW is the lion's share of work in the AE format, absolutely. But I find people just automatically check off IDW and they think, oh, what's the best publisher overall for AE format books? That's not the voting. That's not the category. The category is best publisher for 2022. And again, what publisher or imprint best represented the AE format with their commitment to quality, maintaining their publishing schedule, and promoting their material in the AE format? I'm going to tell you now, IDW is not my pick of these four categories, of these four publishers. 2000 AD slash Rebellion, IDW, Wayne Allen Harold Productions, and Zoop. I don't vote in these awards. I think this is one of the few things I don't vote for, but I'm telling you, I, I don't want to sway. You see, I, I'm anxious to give you my opinion. I'll give it next month when the voting is closed. But please get on there and vote. And as I've said every year, I need to put out a press release. This time I'm going to do it. This week, maybe next week at the latest, I'm going to do a press release. I'm going to send it to the Comic Speed. I'm going to send it to all the websites that I can think of. And we'll see if we can get the voting uh, hot and heavy on this. So, all right, please go and vote for sure. All right, that's that's one piece of mail. Did I get any other interesting mail? Let me check my... And a lot of people subscribing to um, the YouTube channel, and it was me- the YouTube channel was mentioned in the French uh, Facebook group I'm in, and I really appreciate that. Did I get any other? No, that was about the end, only interesting email I got. So that very nice. So thank you, Stephen Z, for mentioning that to me. I'm that's something I'm gonna be tracking. That best of Vampirella. We got to keep our eyes open on that and see what happens. I'll be watching to see if it gets listed. Of course, we're also watching. Lone Wolf and Cub, uh, the reprint. It's it's the the date's updated. I thought because it was it would stagnate because it was the last Wednesday of the month, December twenty eighth. But no, that date is moving. It's happening. So it's not just a dead uh, book right now. The date has moved twice. It's now sitting at January eleventh, which is next Wednesday. So we'll have to see if that date changes again on Wednesday. I'll be able to check Diamond and see if it's any in stock. So. Interesting stuff. All right, let's talk. Let's talk the poll this month, uh, the, the December poll that wrapped up, and th- that was another interesting poll. And I actually I posted, it and then I had to add a little bit to it. So I posted design. While the bulk of every AE format book is scans of original art, there is the opportunity to make those limited pages of other material eye catching, immersive, and engaging. Of this group, who does it best? And then I added something, which was this last sentence. Watch for another group of designers in February. Because I got some emails about, hey, what about this designer? I'm like, oh. So the designers I listed for Jacob Covey from Fantagraphics, Josh Beatman, Graffiti Designs, John Lind, Kitchen Sink Books, Randall Dalk, IDW, and Tina Lessie, Dark Horse. I put Tina Lessie from Dark Horse because Tina came up with the original design that Dark Horse Gallery Editions follow, that very, right, they, they follow a very rigid design. Uh, John Lynn, of course, did the two kitchen sink books. Josh Beatman did the design and for all the graffiti designs. Jacob Covey has designed some fanographic books, not all of them, but he's designed some interesting ones. The ones I, uh, the fanographic studio edition, Jaime Hernandez, which I think really stands out as far as a, a design book. And then, of course, Randall Dalk. Man, he's got so many great designs. I picked my two favorite, actually, for the links. I Jack Kirby, New Gods Artist Edition is a very bold, bright design. I like that. Oh, was it? Or was it? Hold on a second. Oh, oh boy. I'm checking my review now. I think I may have meant, uh, I think I meant, yeah, no, that's a great design. I'm, I, it was Commandy, actually. I like it better. Okay. And then the John Burns Fantastic Forest Edition was a really nice design as well. Oh, well, speaking of which, I did see some more artist editions in, uh, in Montreal. I saw one shop had just outrageously priced books. Two, you know, $250, $300, $400 for artist editions. I mean, I guess that's market price, but. You know, I, I, I see it on eBay and I sort of accept it, right? But when to see it in person, I think I was a little shocked there, a little, little shell shocked at those pricing. Anyway, I'm jumping around here. Back to the designers. I don't think this is any surprise. Randall Dalk won so far with the votes. Josh Beeman, number two. Jacob Covey, number three. John Lind, four. And Tina Lessi, five. So that's the order of voting. I, I voted for John Lind. I'm just going to say it here. Uh, mostly because I felt he'd be underrepresented. Now, next, in, look look in February, and we'll have a new group of designers. So we'll have Serban Christescu for IDW. I'm going to have a different Dark Horse designer. I'm going to have a different Fantagraphics designer. I'm going to have some uh, 
some other people in there too. So that's the poll for December. All right. Solicitations uh, that appeared on the website were very impressive this month. So four solicitations from four different publishers. So pretty exciting. Let's go and let's go just as I posted them. So we had uh, last month we talked and the Michael Golden's Marvel Stories Artist Edition was solicited first through Diamond, which was a surprise. So that did go up finally on Penguin Random House. And that's the, I did, I posted that. Let me give you the blurb again. We don't really have any more new information from this. Uh, the work of one of the most influential artists in comics gets the artist edition treatment. And as I said last time, before the second time, since we have the Micronauts one, Michael Golden is a true artist artist. His work has inspired several generations of comic artists and fans across the globe eagerly await his new releases. This artist edition of Golden's Marvel work will include four stories, two short Nam stories from Strange Adventures and the Wolverine Christmas story, including one of his most fondly remembered, the Spider-Man Hulk from Marvel Fanfare 47, considered to be one of his very best. Additionally, this collection will include pages from Doctor Strange 55, Avengers Annual 10, and covers galore. If you're a Michael Golden fan, then this is the artist edition you've been waiting for. Solicited for July 4th, 12 by 17 inches, the standard modern size, 176 pages, $150 US. Scott Demir is listed, uh, posted, I'm sorry, on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, some pages he's got, some scans for this. Gorgeous. It's stunning. And, uh, well, amazingly worth it. This, now, here's another one. This is the Spring 2023 Slingsby Brothers solicitations. And this is David Wright's Carol Day, Lance Hallam. That's Lance Hallam is the storyline. David Wright is the artist. Carol Day is the newspaper strip. It is a gorgeous British newspaper strip. Let me give you the blurb. I'm not going to give you the whole blurb. I'm going to try and cut it down because there's a lot of material here. In Lance Hallam, we reprint the complete story minus three episodes from the original art in the full size of the originals. A pleasingly large 15 by five and a quarter inches. Our goal is to give readers an experience as close as possible to viewing the original art and to provide a definitive presentation as Wright and his art deserve of one of David Wright's very best stories. Here are the highlights. First, there's an original cover by Brian Boland. Second, this is the first time a comic strip story has been reprinted in its original size and format from the original art. Third, to bring the character into the 21st century, we commissioned a number of great contemporary artists to create their reaction to the character and story, and we think the resulting portfolio showcases some truly outstanding work by some of the best artists working today. You can see these now in the Carol Day by Today's Artists. I've got a link to that. Finally, because we're nerds and avid collectors, in addition to presenting the original art in its original size, we also present scans of the complete art boards with all the marginal notes, editorial comments, revisions, etc. that characterize the art as physical objects. Technical details. 84 strips which ran from January 11th, 1957 to April 1857, along with the Curl Essay. So it's being published as a trade hardcover edition. Um, it's 500 copies. It's The book is 21 by 14 inches. It's printed on acid-free paper. It's 152 pages. It's quarter bound with a cloth spine, colored headbands with a ribbon marker, hot foil stamping on the spine, and cover illustration by Brian Boland. The book has a forward, a brush with Fitz, Fitzrovia by Peter Richardson, the Lance Hallam art, we discussed the artistry of Lance Hallam by Richard Cl Roger Clark, an essay. Carol Day by today's artists, the Lance Hallam boards, which are the like the complete boards, and then acknowledgments and project journey. And they mentioned this is three hundred and fifty U.S. That includes free shipping in the U.S. Shipping to Canada is another twenty-five U.S. If you live outside North America, they ask you to order through Book Palace in the U.K. and that's two hundred ninety-nine uh, pounds. So you do have to reserve a copy of this. I've reserved my copy. There's no way I'd miss out on this. But you can also, there. I've got a link for that as well to reserve the copy. I'm going to be emailing them again. I emailed and asked for more info and didn't get any. I'm going to email them again and ask for samples. They Because they say the book is at the printer, which means the layouts and everything are done. It'd be nice to see some samples of this. I'd love to post some sample pictures so that people can see what it is because I think people are a bit scared I mean obviously 350 US is a lot of money for this book there's no question but I mean if you've if you've seen David Wright's art I mean you've got to go to the website and click it it's it's stunning like it's so gorgeous you've got to go check it out all right next solicitation this is uh 2080 solicitations so we have the 2080 art of Kevin O'Neill apex edition so that's exciting 
An incredible insight into the art of one of comics' most unique talents. The 2080 Art of Kevin O'Neill Apex Edition is available to pre-order now. Due for release on 20th June 2023, the Apex Edition will be available in standard and special slipcase editions. The standard edition is available for pre-order from the 2080 web shop and will be also available for comic book stores to order through Diamond Distribution's previews magazine next year. The slipcase edition is only available in 2080 web shop and will include an individually numbered extra bound page featuring a page of brand new art created by O'Neill exclusively for this edition. The contents of this 160 page collection were compiled by O'Neill from his own archive Working closely with Rebellion's editorial and reprographics team. I'm not familiar with that word before, Repro- reprographics. To curate this unmissable testament to his remarkable career. So there's more blurb. It's, uh, it's yeah, let me give you the details. So they give you a complete list of all the stories. It's pretty good. So 160 pages, 120.99 US. And you can order from 2080. It has not been solicited through Diamond yet because it's shipping, uh, again, <clears throat> In June, I'd expect this to be solicited maybe the March previews. So we'll have to watch for that. So there you go. All right, and last solicitation. And this was from Penguin Random House. This is Frank Miller's Daredevil Artist's Edition. So this uh, this is my blurb because there's absolutely no blurb info on the Penguin Random House site. It's really odd. So here's my blurb. This was posted to Penguin Random House's website with no solicitation information other than the title, ISBN, price, and page count. Since IDW no longer produces Artifact Editions, and this is 144 pages, it appears to be a straight reprint of Frank Miller's Daredevil Artifact Edition. So it's solicited for August 15th, 144 pages, 150 US. So I was I was so hoping when I saw this that because it's an solicit there it's right. I was hoping that we'd get more pages because I'm sure Scott Dunbeer has been able to locate more Frank Miller Daredevil pages, and I'd like to see this book with additional pages because this is an early solicitation nothing set in stone let's keep our fingers crossed let's send good thoughts maybe emails to scott dunbeer or contact him through facebook and say hey i'd love to see additional pages in this book because here's a book that was wonderful going back to print and really has the opportunity to add more pages so let's really hope for that so that's pretty exciting gotta say all right uh, shipping changes. Let's have a look. The only change, as I already mentioned, Lone Wolf and Cub Gallery Edition is being is now January 11th, and everything else is as we expect. And uh, like I said, I'm I'm really hoping uh, Judge Dredd by Mick McMahon Apex Edition uh, is not delayed for everybody. And maybe hopefully it's well, I don't hope that it's an issue just for me, but hopefully everybody gets a copy. All right, <clears throat> let's talk out of print sales. Uh, a lot of movement uh, this month, interestingly. Uh, so let's, this is uh, eBay sales, November 2022, 20, because I posted this in December. So let's talk two new records this month. Records are always interesting. David Mazzucchelli's Daredevil Morning and Earnest Edition, standard, not signed. One, one copy went for five ninety nine ninety nine dollars on November 15th. So that is a big jump. Gil Kane's Amazing Spider-Man Artist Edition, again, a regular edition, not a variant, not as limited anything, went for $3.99.99. That is, whoosh, that's big, things are hopping here. So John Byrne's Fantastic Four Artist Edition, no record this month, but I mean, the high has been 400 so maybe that one I saw for 250 Canadian wasn't such a bad deal. All right, anyway, let's talk sales. Batman The Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller Gallery Edition, one copy, one hundred two fifty. that's a great price, wow. Four copies of Bernie Wright's and Artifact Edition Second Print, one sixty seven forty nine average. One copy of Best of ECRs Edition Volume Two, two twenty five. One copy of Dave Cockrum's X Men Artifact Edition, one twenty. One copy of Dave Gibbons' Watchmen Artifact Edition, one nineteen ninety nine. One copy of David Mazzucchelli's Daredevil Born Again Artifact Edition, five ninety nine ninety nine. That's the record I mentioned. Two copies of Don Rose's Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck Volume One, averaging one forty seven forty seven. Two copies of Fantagraphics Studio Edition, How Foster's Prince Valiant, for averaging one thirty three eighty seven. dollars I haven't seen those of it. That's a, that's a good price. Two copies of Frank Miller's Daredevil Artifact Edition, sold for an average of two fourteen ninety nine. dollars Ouch, before the announcement. Three copies of Gil Kane's The Amazing Spider-Man, averaging two thirteen thirty three. dollars One copy of Jack Kirby, The Forever People, ninety nine ninety nine. dollars Two copies of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four Artist Edition, averaging one thirty two fifty. dollars one copy of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four of the World's Greatest Heroes Edition sold for three ninety nine. Three copies of Jack Kirby's Marvel Heroes and Monsters averaging one ninety nine ninety nine. 
One copy of Jim Lee DC Legends, two seventy nine ninety nine. Wow. One copy of John Burns X Men Artifact Edition, five hundred dollars. There's this book, man. That, that book just there's there's book needs a reprint. One copy of John Romita's Amazing Spider Man Artist Edition, one seventy five. Two copies of Volume Two of that, averaging one twenty five. Three copies of Marvel Covers Artist Edition First Print, one forty nine ninety seven. I can't remember the last time we saw that book with that many, right? One copy of Mike McDonald's Hellboy and Hell and All the Stories Artist Edition Second Print sold for two hundred dollars. Wow. All right. One copy of P. Craig Russell's Strange Dreams for one fifteen. One copy of Ross Andrews' The Amazing Spider Man for one sixty nine ninety nine. Three copies of Sam Keeps the Max, averaging two eighty three thirty one. One copy of Sergio Aragonas Grew the Wanderer for one eighty nine ninety nine. Three copies of Spawn Vault Edition, averaging three sixty one sixty seven. One copy of Stranko Nick Fury Agent of Shield Artist Edition, two forty nine ninety nine. Two copies of the Book of Ballads, averaging fifty one. One copy of Usagi Jimbo Samurai and Other Stories for two hundred. Two copies of Hollywood's Easy Stories Artist Edition Second Print, averaging one seventy five forty two. One copy of Walter Simonson's Star Wars Artist Edition for one forty nine ninety nine, and that wraps the month. Interesting stuff. All right, all right. Let's talk. I only have one review this month because uh, I my existing job wrapped up. And I was finally able to move home, which is my new home where I moved. Interestingly, I built uh, I built Artist Edition bookshelves. I used two by fours. Did I talk about this last month? I don't remember. Used two by fours. Uh, these these shelves weigh about two hundred fifty pounds each, with no books on them. But they can I can sit on each shelf, and it holds me no problem. So I, I get all the Artist Editions, I get them all loaded up, and bam, both shelves already full. I was so disappointed. I'm thinking to myself, now I got to build a third one, and I don't know where it's going to go in my new library. Plus, they're rough plywood i gotta finish them do something i just can't believe i filled them already anyway all right how can you support the artist edition index why would you want to bother why support me at all right i i post the articles anyways i post the reviews well just to keep me going just to say thanks uh three ways uh, one clicking the affiliate links in the websites that's the best way to support me because uh these books uh, you you're gonna buy it anyways you click the link i get a percentage that's awesome i love that Another way is by the store. Uh, the store is getting a bit thinner and thinner because I haven't had any real deals, so I haven't been buying books to fill in the store. But I still have some books here. One, two, three, four, five, five artist editions in the store and one portfolio. So there you go. And then the last way to support me is through Patreon and to be a Patreon patron. A dollar more, whatever you'd like, in or in your own currency. Greatly appreciated. And again, what, all right, so then you may ask yourself, what does he do with this money? I buy more books. I keep the website going. That's really where all the money goes. I keep a I keep a ledger. I think I mentioned this before. And uh, you know, it's uh, I watch whether it's in the black or the red. You know, I buy I buy some books. It goes red. I get some affiliate. You know, I get some affiliate money. I get some my Patreon money every month. Maybe it stays in the red. Maybe it goes a couple times a year. It goes into the black again, and then it immediately goes in the red. But I like to keep track of it. It's nice, you know, at the end of each year to look and say, "Well, did I break even? How much in the hole am I?" It's just a nice perspective, and I appreciate all the support. So, if you have an ability to do so, please do so. All right, my review for this month: Raw Fury, the Art of Mike Zek. Here's the blurb: The Cartoon Art Museum presents Raw Fury, the Might of Art, the Art of Mike Zek, in a career retrospective on display from April 5th to August 10th, 2014. This exhibition features the most comprehensive collection of the fan favorite artist's most iconic artwork ever assembled, including the Punisher, G.I. Joe, The Amazing Spider-Man, Marvel Superhero, Secret Wars, and Captain America. A full color exhibition catalog will be published in conjunction with the exhibition, featuring more than 50 pieces of original artwork, an introduction by exhibition curator Charles Costas, and commentary from Beck himself. So this was published by the Cartoon Art Museum in 2014. It's 8.5 by 11 inches, 64 pages. It's a soft cover. Uh, perfect bound. It's, it was $29.99 US. So I bought this from Mike Zek, I want to say in 2016. Let me have a look because I wrote an article about it. 2015 I bought it. October 2015. Because uh, this is the, it was the first time I ever paid for a signature. I paid Mike Zek $5 to sign my artist edition. This book was 40 Canadian at the time, and he also signed this for me. So it is a, yeah, and a lot of stuff you already, if you have the uh, 
Mike Zach's classic Marvel stories artist edition. You've got a lot of this stuff, but then there's things that you don't. It's a nice size. It's artwork that I guess, like I said, is not in the artist edition. And it's a very nice collection. Mike Zach sells at his table a lot. Of, I don't know if he's still selling it. Obviously, I bought mine seven years ago. I don't know if he still has any copies, but uh, the Cartoon Art Museum puts together some nice books. I was gifted a book uh, about from about Sandman original art from a forum member. And I will be reviewing that next month. I wanted to review it this month, but my wrapping up my uh, existing job uh, took all my time. So only the one review this month. And then our trip to Montreal sort of cut into everything. And I'm I w- I'm a review short. So we'll see how what this month brings. I was hoping January. I'm going to get that Sandman book reviewed. And I'm hoping to get the new, new Mick McMahon uh, Apex Edition reviewed. So we'll see how that goes. All right. that's uh, That's pretty much for the month. I'm uh, I'm going to back to the homepage to see if there's anything else, but uh, yeah, that uh, check out the check out the images of the Zek book. See if that's something you know. That if you're not sure, it's maybe more palatable to order that for thirty bucks as opposed to finding the uh, artist edition, which as far as I know is still available. But uh, good stuff, and please go vote in the Dunby Awards, and please read the categories very carefully. And as I stressed over and over again about the publisher. Give that some thought before you vote for publisher. And uh, thank you for joining me, and we'll uh, we'll do this again next month. Let her go, let her go, God bless her, wherever she may be. She can search this wide world over. She'll never find a sweet man like me.